meet the people. And the people have decided to meet Robert Muldoon in their thousands. So I think uh, New Zealand needs a strong leader, but um, not stupidly strong, and certainly not dictatorial. And I, I've still retained my sense of humour um, under the most trying conditions. <laughs> I think that stops you uh, being too tough. There are, of course, people who think that Rob Muldoon may be too tough. Thank you very much. The question of leadership. Whether or not this country has got, as Prime Minister, a man who's a leader. Muldoon is a journalist dream. In New Zealand, it's an unusual day when his name is not on the front page of your morning paper. People name things after him, anything from a bar to a champion racehorse. They also write songs about him. He himself has already written his autobiography, a bestseller. Whether you love him or hate him, you must agree that Piggy Muldoon, as he is widely known, is above all else, a politician. I'm going to speak about it now, don't be impatient. I wanted to start from this point. This is from the Labour Party manifesto, this red thing. You're not going to like this answer, I can see that. Uh, if you're going to say, all right, I'm not going to make any enemies, you're not going to be a good politician, particularly you're not going to be a good politician in government. I think that one of the faults of the Labour Party in opposition was that they said yes to everyone. So, all right, they got into government and they couldn't deliver. They couldn't deliver what they'd promised. They'd said yes to too many people. When they were in opposition, he would have expected to see under a Labour government this headline, New Zealand negotiates largest loan ever with international Paul have got somewhere deep down a sense of humour, even if they repress it. So if you're going to communicate to people and get your ideas over, you've got to have a sense of humour. You've got to have a sense of the ridiculous. You've got to have a sense of... Uh, what just sounds um, uh, incredible. Uh, and I know a few politicians that haven't, of course, they just sound incredible. Uh, but uh, you've got to have some kind of a sense of humour. But you talk about detachment, and that's, that's very important. New Zealand is uh, the most intimate democracy in the world. Most everybody likes so rough, because he's quite a man. And if anybody should need some help, oh, rough, she'll lend the hand. But there's one more thing I'd like to say before my story's through. Rowdy Muldoon from Tamaki, we're all proud of you. I mean, as political propaganda, it's, it, it, it's what we've got these days. What they said they were going to do. I don't think that he made an impression as anything other than an entertainer. I think there's a man named Tizard. Um, he was Minister of Health, he's now Minister of Finance. He was member for Tamaki once, but I won't go into that. Um, in fact, in some parts of the country, they're introducing me as the first politician to be named after a horse. <laughs> I'm in better shape than Noodlem, and he's a champion. the superannuation scheme, if I may say so. This thing's going to commence on the 1st of April next, and that's a very appropriate day for it to commence. <laughs> because it's going to make a fool out of about half the working population. So I'm a competitor. After all, you play cricket or you play football, and uh, statistically you only win half of the time, but it doesn't stop you playing football or cricket that the Labour Party had all the answers to the evils of capitalism. They always said, just put us in, we'll fix it. That's what they said, didn't they? No, that's what they said. They always said, look, put us in, we've got all the answers, all these evil capitalists are stopping people getting houses. We'll put it right, we'll house the people. All right, they'll house you if you can save $101 a week in Auckland, plus a bit more to, to get your deposit. They'll house you. But I don't know anybody who can do it. And I'll bet you couldn't. <laughs> the
there's, there's um, a man up here says, what would we do? Um, go back, go back to 1972. Go back to 1972. There's a lot of people would like to go back to 1972 and have their vote over again. Look, I know thousands of people. I guess there are a few here in this hall tonight. If they could only go back to December 19, to November 1972 and say, by gosh, I wouldn't vote for that lot. So go back to, go back to 1972 and I've given you the answer. I think it would be a, a great thing for the country. Oh, I would um, think it would do us a lot of good. He's a bit Mr Churchill's wife. Anybody who's lived in this country, been brought up in this country, is a, is a man in the street. I know him because I'm one of them. <laughs> He's in control. He's in control. Would you not agree that it was a matter of for concern if you had shown a picture of an Echo 1 submarine and ascribed to it the powers of an Echo 2 submarine? Oh, it might have been a matter of concern to a nitpicker. Now, how about giving me your fourth question where you Prime asked Minister, me... Prime Minister, I am not going to give questions to your dictation. I should like to ask you now, is there anything to suggest that any of these Soviet missiles are aimed at us? How about the fourth question where you question whether the Rapucha landing ship was in Prime fact Minister, Russian? Prime Minister, I must ask that to was be allowed quest to ask no, questions no, no, in no. my own No, you time. can't because you gave me the questions you wanted to ask me. Prime very Minister, kindly, I gave you some facts that very we kindly, could consider And now you're not answering them because you like found out that they're incorrect. If there is anything to suggest that these missiles are aimed at us? None whatsoever. The producer of this program told me today that he would give me the questions that would be asked so that I could confer with defence intelligence sources and give correct answers for the benefit of the people of this country. Prime Minister, I, I will not, I will have, not have some time. smart Alec interviewer changing the rules of the game halfway through, Mr Walker. Prime now, Minister, I regret that we have run out of time. Nonetheless, thank you for your interview. The following is a party political broadcast on behalf of the National Party. Tonight, superannuation. On April Fool's Day, the Labour government started a compulsory superannuation scheme and called it a bold piece of social legislation. It wasn't even a very funny joke. What they didn't tell you was that nobody would get its full benefit until the year 2028. If you're one of New Zealand's half million housewives, you don't get anything, ever. The same goes for the 500,000 people over 55 and the 400,000 on social security. But the superannuation scheme isn't just one of Labour's bad ideas. It's also a dangerous one. Shortly, Labour will be taking millions out of our pay packets each week and spending it. In just seven years, they'll have enough money to buy every share in every public company in New Zealand. Soon, they could buy all the farms. Indeed, one day, the government could wind up owning literally everything. And you know what that's called, don't you?